Sleaze, sleaze, sleaze. Tory sleaze. That's literally all we're seeing and hearing on Twitter and on our TV screens this week. A desperate, pathetic attempt to create a tabloid-like scandal over a man buying some wallpaper without taxpayer money in a flat he doesn't even own. It's a distraction, a diversion, a hypocritical attempt to create a fake drama during an election while our mainstream media refuse to cover genuine sleaze and genuine scandal. And it isn't coming from the Tory party, it's coming from Labour, from MPs, from councillors, from mayors, from entire Labour-run councils across the United Kingdom. In their wake, this Labour sleaze continues to ruin lives and damage entire communities, from vote fraud to child abuse, corruption to cronyism, suspensions to arrests. Let's take a look at some of the many, many Labour scandals that have taken place in the past six months alone. We'll start with MP Claudia Webb. The MP who represents Leicester East, despite living over 100 miles away in London, was charged with harassing a woman with a string of unwanted and abusive telephone calls in which she made a series of serious threats. Webb acknowledged making the calls and was released on bail. But the MP's trial this month was dramatically postponed after her high-profile barrister was allegedly rushed to hospital, leaving her with no defence lawyer. Interestingly, however, the barrister in question only called in sick 20 minutes before the trial was due to start. It's now been rescheduled for September and, if found guilty, Webb risks losing her seat in Parliament. Two months ago, over in Milton Keynes, Labour councillor Shami Akhtar was arrested after leaving her four-year-old son home alone for four hours. Alerting the police, her ex-partner who arrived at the address said that the doors and windows were locked and when officers came to force entry, they found the little boy holding his father's hand through the letterbox. An officer who managed to get into the house to help him described the home as being like a sauna with, in his words, a very strong smell of urine, excrement smeared on the carpet and a pair of scissors left out on a bedside table. Akhtar was handed an eight-month jail sentence suspended for 18 months and ordered to wear an electronic tag for six months. She also lost her seat on the council. This month, a Labour Tower Hamlets councillor who denied the existence of the Jewish race and who argued that Jews have no historical claim to a homeland had his suspension overturned and now remains a fully-fledged member of the party and still sits on the council. Pura Mia, the councillor in question, was also Momentum's former national treasurer and wrote on social media that there was no factual basis whatsoever for a Jewish race before going on to say that anyone who disagreed with him was spreading Zionist propaganda. Since the lifting of his suspension, Maya has spoken out in defence of terrorist Shemima Begum and stated that she should still be allowed to be a British citizen. Speaking of terrorists, Labour was also slammed in February this year after a leaked party document revealed that, if in power, they would change the law to allow terrorists, paedophiles and murderers to vote in local and general elections. Meanwhile, two other anti-Semitic councillors were allowed back into the Labour Party, this time over in the London borough of Haringey. The two councillors, Noah Tucker and Preston Tabooy, were placed on administrative suspension after sharing disgusting anti-Semitic posts and conspiracy theories, including claiming that the policeman who killed George Floyd had received training from Israeli law enforcement officers, and also sharing posts that claimed the Holocaust was a hoax and that Jews had murdered their own people in the gas chambers to get sympathy to establish a Jewish state. Just six months later, however, despite Keir Starmer's promise to address anti-Semitism in his party, both councillors were welcomed back with open arms. Over in Wales, no less than eight elected Labour officials were recently suspended as a result of the anti-Semitism report, all of them connected to momentum. One of them has since left the party, yet remains in the Senate, and others are expected to have their suspensions overturned in the coming months. In Oxfordshire, Labour District Councillor Mike Carhill was suspended two months ago for sharing an anti-Semitic cartoon. Issuing a statement in response to the scandal, a party spokesman said, The Labour Party takes all complaints of anti-Semitism extremely seriously and they are fully investigated in line with our rules and procedures. But this, quite frankly, was a load of bollocks, as Votewatch discovered when talking to former Brexit Party candidate Tom Bright. 
Posting a tweet to condemn some anti-Semitism graffiti he'd seen in Greenwich, Tom, who is of Jewish heritage, found himself attacked by Labour's leader of Greenwich Council, Danny Forp, who, just because Tom had also criticised the Labour Party in his tweet, contacted Tom's employer in an attempt to have him sacked. In February this year, two Labour branches were suspended by the NEC after Met Police launched an investigation into a number of serious accusations and evidence provided to them highlighting alleged anti-Semitism, irregular membership activity and vote fraud. The East Ham and West Ham branches are understood to still be under suspension, with police investigations ongoing. Over in Leeds this year, Labour councillor Ron Graham, a frequent campaigner for MP Richard Bergen, was charged over historical offences relating to attempted rape and child abuse. A spokesman for West Yorkshire Police said, Ronald Graham, aged 76 from Leeds, has been charged by postal requisition with four sexual offences alleged to have occurred between 1980 and 1982, which all relate to one child victim. Over in Blackburn last month, Mayor Iftikhar Hussain resigned after breaking lockdown laws to attend a wedding party at someone's house. The councillor had initially tried to give the bizarre excuse that he only went to the address to open the front door to allow a delivery driver to go inside and give the guests their food. This, of course, was nonsense, and he later resigned, yet is now standing again in the upcoming election, still as a Labour councillor candidate. Another Labour councillor who broke lockdown laws was councillor Aftab Razak, who, like a right royal numpty, flew all the way to Pakistan to attend a wedding and was caught in wedding photos posing with guests. At the time, it was illegal for people to travel abroad for holidays and other leisure purposes. The Labour councillor then seemed to disappear after being caught and has since gone silent. In Rotherham this February, Labour councillor Sue Ellis was sanctioned after it was discovered that she'd been accepting taxpayer cash for a role that she had stood down from over 15 months earlier. Although Ellis left the position in May 2019, she continued to receive a wage of £600 per month until August 2020. Also in Rotherham, another Labour councillor, Jane Senior left the party after claiming she had been subjected to an extensive campaign of harassment and intimidation by fellow Labour councillors. The abuse allegedly began after Mrs Senior bravely acted as a whistleblower to expose the Rotherham grooming scandal, giving information to the Times for a series of stories exposing failures by the authorities to effectively tackle grooming gangs operating in the town. Announcing her resignation, Councillor Senior said, since shortly after my election as a Labour councillor in May 2016, I have been the subject of ceaseless harassment and intimidation. There has been a systematic and long-standing campaign to undermine me as a person, as a councillor and as a long-standing member and supporter of the Labour Party. Since August 2016, if not before, I have been the target of malicious and vexatious investigations and data breaches which have compromised my personal security and those of my family and have made us all feel very unsafe. During this period of time, I have repeatedly asked but received no support from the leader of the council and this has led me to feel that I have no alternative but to resign from the Labour Party. In Leicester this year, Members of the public discovered that disgraced former MP Keith Vaz, who made national headlines after being filmed offering a male prostitute cocaine, had been elected as the chairman of the Labour branch representing Claudia Webb's constituency. Vaz had been expected to be expelled completely from the Labour Party, yet is now expected by some to be planning a political comeback. In Blackpool, Labour Council leader Simon Blackburn resigned over an ongoing investigation into allegations made by a female colleague. The full details haven't yet been released and, as with the vast majority of scandals involving Labour politicians, his resignation hasn't been covered by the mainstream media. This year, locals in Exeter have revived a campaign to demand to know why a former Labour councillor isn't behind bars, despite committing serious and utterly disgusting crimes. While acting as a Labour councillor and also working at a children's home, Roger Spackman was arrested for downloading over one million images of child abuse, with police finding images on multiple devices and USB sticks. His collection included hundreds of thousands of Category A images, including 12-year-olds being brutally raped. At the time, Exeter Crown Court heard that the council was part of an underground internet network called The Other Place, an evil network of paedophiles using the web to share their abuse of children. But despite this, 
in another clear demonstration of how weak and backward our justice system is in this country, Spackman was only handed a 10-month suspended sentence, 40 days in rehab, and to date has not spent a single day behind bars. In Oxfordshire two months ago, Labour councillor Jamila Azdawas was suspended after bypassing the queue for a Covid jab and buying one illegally. And who could have missed the scandal involving Labour's Joe Anderson, the mayor of Liverpool who was arrested and charged by anti-fraud police along with infamous Labour figure Derek Hatton. Five men were arrested in total and remain on bail, all linked to crooked building and development contracts. The arrest of Anderson was a blow for Len McCluskey, the boss of Labour's biggest financial donor, Unite the Union, after it was revealed that he had handed over £74 million of the union's cash to one of the men arrested, along with Anderson, to build a hotel that should have only cost £35 million. The matter is now being investigated, and it's yet to be revealed if the huge discrepancy includes any backhanders or illegal deals. In February, Labour Welsh Assembly member Rhiannon Passmore, who was previously fined for refusing to allow police to test if she'd been drink driving, was found to have broken lockdown laws after she was caught making a Zoom call to Parliament from her lover's pad 100 miles away in England. No action was taken against her and she hasn't apologised for the incident. Last month, the Labour-run council in Croydon came under serious scrutiny after its former leader, Tony Newman, and deputy Simon Hall resigned over a multi-million pound scandal that completely bankrupted the council and caused misery for thousands of local residents. Interestingly, as with Unite the Union's Len McCluskey and Joe Anderson, the dodgy duo handed over £100 million of the council's cash to a company to build a posh hotel, with full details of the company not yet revealed. Both are now under investigation after a damning report highlighted financial mismanagement, financial irregularities and concluded that council officials were instructed by members of Newman's cabinet to rewrite some of their reports, in effect to disguise the council's mounting financial problems. Under Newman's and Hall's watch, Croydon was forced to declare bankruptcy and damaging cuts were made to local services. Also under their watch, as a journalist recently revealed on ITV, Residents across Croydon were left to live in misery and uninhabitable conditions, with their homes riddled with mould, including one flat where an old woman with lung cancer had received no help despite making countless complaints over a number of years. In another recent case of Labour sleaze, Newcastle Labour councillor Deep Hugh Herhad pleaded guilty to harassment in what was a bizarre and perverted campaign of stalking. Targeting one of his female constituents, the court heard that over a five-month period, the councillor set up fake email and social media accounts to harass the woman, constantly called her, and even secretly went to her front drive one night and vandalised her car with graffiti. A hard is yet to be sentenced, but the judge has confirmed that he could potentially face time in prison. In another case last month, a Labour councillor from Derby appeared in court after being charged in relation to postal vote fraud. Councillor Asaf Afzal and three other men were arrested following a police investigation and are due to appear in court again later this year. Three months ago, over in Oldham, Labour councillor Martin Judd appeared in court charged with downloading child pornography. Judd faces allegations that between 2018 and the same month last year, he downloaded 15 Category A images of children, 23 Category B and 48 Category C. Due to delays caused by the pandemic, the trial is now expected to be held in January of next year. Another Labour politician who committed electoral fraud this year was Councillor Chaudhry Mohammed Iqbal, whom Labour clearly didn't carry out any checks on during the selection process and who lied to election officials that he lived in Ilford so that he could stand for election there. After winning a seat and collecting thousands of pounds in expense payments, his lie was exposed and Iqbal was jailed in January for 17 months. Whilst on the subject of fraud, earlier this year, Labour MP Epsana Begum, who also appeared in court, was charged with housing fraud. The MP for Popular and Limehouse was found to have jumped over 18,000 vulnerable residents waiting for years on the housing register to bag herself a nice riverside London apartment. Further questions were raised over the application and her close connections with members of the council and long-running history with Tower Hamlet's fraudster Lutthor Rahman. The MP, who was elected to Parliament in December 2019, is accused of concealing the true state of her housing situation between 2013 and 2016 to keep hold of the expensive, much sought-after London property.
Despite being charged with fraud, the Labour Party have still not suspended her, and despite awaiting another court hearing, Begum was recently used by London Mayor Sadiq Khan, a.k.a. Weak Sadiq, on his official campaign team. Also making an appearance in the docks this year was former Rotherham Labour Lord Nazir Ahmed, who's been charged with two counts of attempting to rape a girl under 16, indecent assault of a boy under 14, and raping a boy under 16. Mr Ahmed's brothers, Mohammed Farouk, 70, and Mohammed Tariq, 65, also from Rotherham, have also been accused of the indecent assault of a boy under 14, but claim they are unfit to enter pleas. This month, another Labour-run council was placed under police investigation, this time over allegations of fraud. Council officials from Blackburn are said to be cooperating with the police, yet full details of the allegations haven't yet been made public. Sources, however, informed Vote Watch that the investigation relates to potentially illegal contracts. This month in Peterborough, two Labour councillors were suspended under mysterious circumstances. Councillor and former local party leader and parliamentary candidate Ed Murphy and Councillor Heather Skibstead. Murphy had previously been slammed for claiming on live radio that people who voted for Brexit, including the vast majority of the electorate in Peterborough, were thick. Councillor Skibstead's partner Alan Ball was himself involved in the scandal whilst a Labour Party candidate in 2019 when he's alleged to have said that the Holocaust was a hoax. His nomination to be a candidate was proposed by Ed Murphy and by his partner Heather Skibstead at the time, before he was later deselected. The Labour Party are unwilling to confirm or deny that their suspension is connected in any way to allegations of anti-Semitism. This month, MP Liam Byrne faces allegations that he illegally diverted public money intended for parliamentary duties into his own mayoral election campaign. Along with other witnesses, one of Byrne's former members of staff has also provided damning evidence. Tory MP Andrew Bridgen has since written to IPSA demanding an urgent inquiry and the Electoral Commission has so far refused to investigate. Also this month, two Labour councillors, Joanne Hadley and Yvonne Davies, resigned from the party, accusing the Labour group who runs Sanwell Council of trying to cover up corruption and cronyism, with Davies accusing Labour of trying to, in her own words, bury the truth about their wrongdoing. At another Labour-run council this month, this time in Thanet, council leader Rick Everett dramatically quit after being accused of a series of failures. The following week, back over in Peterborough, two Labour councillors who used a convicted vote rigger to win their seats were filmed being involved in the harassment of a local resident simply because he supports the Conservative Party. Driving around without wearing a seatbelt, councillor Mohammed Jamal was filmed making abusive comments before being joined by infamous Labour councillor Sabina Quayam, who was informed of the harassment taking place, yet chose to laugh and thank the main harasser before driving off. Shabina was investigated in 2019 after being accused by an elderly lady of attempting to steal her postal vote. Shabina was once again involved in a further scandal just days after being filmed in her car, this time for threatening a local resident for speaking out against racist comments made by another fellow Labour councillor. The comment in question was made by councillor Amjad Iqbal, who wrote on Facebook that Eastern Europeans were to blame for fly tipping in the city and that they needed educating because, according to him, fly tipping is part of their country's culture. Iqbal left residents across the city outraged, with a TV chef even accusing him of racism and calling him out for lying about Eastern European countries allowing the dumping of rubbish on roadsides. In Liverpool last week, Labour councillor Joe Hansen was sacked from his role with a housing association after being accused of cronyism. Hansen was found to have colluded with a close friend and fellow council officer in secret, unrecorded meetings to help install his friend as the association's new chief executive, a role that pays a salary of £100,000 a year. Also in Liverpool last week, Labour councillor Christine Banks lost her court bid to prevent a newspaper from revealing she'd provided a glowing character reference for a taxi driver who had been charged with multiple sexual attacks against women. In the same week, Sarah Morton, another councillor from Liverpool, was suspended after celebrating the death of Prince Philip and writing on social media, and I quote, The world is a better place without this fascist piece of inbred shit. That week... Labour councillor and Unite the Union spokesman John Wiseman was also suspended after it was discovered that he'd intentionally hidden the fact that he'd been banned from teaching. 
Wiseman had been banned after being caught fraudulently modifying the coursework of his pupils to dupe exam boards. In Derbyshire, another Labour councillor, Oyoti Wilkinson, a former caseworker for disgraced MP Chris Williamson, was also suspended after calling Prince Philip a massive racist and a bigot. The week before, Labour councillor David Everett from North West Leicestershire was slammed by the public for writing on social media that he hoped Brexit voters would infect each other with Covid and die. Everett hasn't been punished by the party and is standing in the upcoming local elections for Labour. Last month, Hartlepool's MP Mike Hall suddenly quit, sparking an imminent by-election. The Labour MP is being investigated over allegations he made unwanted sexual advances to a woman who worked in the House of Commons. Back over to Liverpool again, where Labour councillor Malcolm Kennedy was found to be claiming expenses despite not living in his constituency. In fact, Kennedy doesn't even live in Liverpool at all. He lives in Spain. Perhaps most shocking of all is that Kennedy has been allowed to keep his seat on the council and continue to claim taxpayer cash from Spain each month despite never going back to visit Liverpool. Two months ago, powerful group Labour Together, whose directors include Labour MPs Lisa Nandy, John Crudus and Steve Reid, was placed under investigation after failing to declare over £800,000 of donations. The investigation is still ongoing, but the mainstream media, true to form, remain silent, and the Electoral Commission, despite it being in their remit, have also refused to investigate. Two months ago, MPs Dawn Butler and Diane Abbott accused their own party of failing to investigate racism after over 1,000 complaints made against the Labour Party were found to have been shelved. This week, Councillor Mesa Iqbal from Sheffield was placed under official investigation with no full details given so far. Literally all we know is that it relates to complaints of incompetent and improper behaviour. This month, the Labour-run council of Leicester City was accused of breaking election laws after using its official website to promote the Labour Party ready for the upcoming election. In Enfield this week, calls for Labour councillors to resign were renewed once again after the Labour cabinet filed its accounts late for the third year running, costing the taxpayer £100,000 in fines. And once again, back to Peterborough, where Votewatch exposed the Labour Party for using a convicted vote rigger on their official election campaign. Tarek Mahmood hit national headlines in 2019 after Votewatch exclusively revealed that the criminal was not only being used by former MP Lisa Forbes to win her seat, but had also helped run the election campaigns of several councillors in the city. In an attempt to cover up the truth, Forbes and the councillors denied any knowledge of Mahmood, who was sent to jail years before along with Peterborough's Labour mayor for trying to rig an election. Through almost 100 images, I proved that they were lying. During this time, when CCTV footage from the polling station used by Mahmood was requested, the venue announced that it had mysteriously been deleted. After another investigation by Votewatch, it was revealed that the organisation who owned the building had none other than Tarek Mahmood himself as a senior member. Last week, Mahmood was once again out campaigning for Labour, with the local left-wing newspaper Peterborough Today responding to our exclusive by attempting to cover up Mahmood's involvement, printing that he was out having a haircut and just happened to bump into a group of Labour campaigners. Not only did the newspaper intentionally choose to leave out the images of Mahmood, but they also failed to ask a very common-sense question. Why would a bold man be going to a hairdresser's carrying a copy of the electoral register? It's since been confirmed that the photographs in question were taken in Central Ward, an area of the city nowhere near where Mahmood claims to have been going. Speaking to Votewatch, Tory councillor and deputy leader of Peterborough Council Wayne Fitzgerald said, Voters should have 100% confidence in our electoral system and be certain that everything is above board. Sadly, here in Peterborough, it seems that it's not the case as once again a convicted vote fraudster is seemingly involved in election campaigning for the Labour Party. We have already had reports of them harvesting votes from the public and particularly from those that are vulnerable and mostly EU citizens. I myself personally knocked on a door only yesterday whilst out campaigning and became very suspicious because the postal vote he had in hand was already pledged to the local Labour candidate and possibly in return for a payment of some sorts. In my book, if it smells wrong, then it probably is. 
the authorities and the police do really need to crack down on this postal vote problem here in Peterborough and put some tangible resources into catching these election cheats. It is not acceptable to hand out bottles of spirits, either from the back of 4x4s on election day, which I am told is another favourite trick from the Labour Party. We all know it happens and it should be investigated on the day at all polling stations. It's basic police work, he said. And finally, in a shocking turn of events yesterday, 14 members of the Labour Party in Peterborough were suspended for anti-Semitism, including seven sitting councillors. So that means in the past month alone, over half of the Labour councillors on Peterborough City Council have been suspended. Among them is Councillor Shabin Aquayam and Mohammed Jamil. Speaking to me yesterday, Peterborough's Tory MP Paul Bristow strongly condemned anti-Semitism in Peterborough and has now invited the JLC to the city to discuss how best to tackle it. So there you have it, folks. Widespread corruption, fraud, vote rigging, cronyism and countless scandals from Labour. But here's the problem, and it's a major one. Not only are the police not interested but our mainstream media completely refused to report the truth, choosing instead to cover up for them and issue a barrage of constant diversion in the form of Tory bashing and now relentless coverage of a Prime Minister who, without using any taxpayer cash, decorated a flat that he doesn't even own, so won't even permanently benefit from. You won't hear any of what I've just told you in your newspaper or on the BBC because they refuse to cover it. Instead, they're now busy flooding your television screens and Twitter accounts with curtains and wallpaper like one long, tedious IKEA advert. Meanwhile, millions upon millions of pounds has been squandered by Labour-run councils across the country. Labour politicians have been arrested, MPs have been charged and await trial, councillors have broken multiple laws, have committed fraud, child abuse and the scandals are now pouring in almost on a daily basis. It's a pandemic in itself and it can be summed up with one term that you also won't see in the mainstream media but which is your duty to now share and expose. Labour sleaze.